In a previous video, you saw us design and build a set of 180 degree headers for a Gen 5 L83. And recently, we got the thing running. And today we're going to ask, can you get the same sound and performance benefits from a set of headers that are a whole lot easier to package? Alright guys, this is the engine that we recently featured in a previous video where we built this set of 180 degree headers. Now in that video we showed you how to get the exhaust waves to sort of equal out going into the collector on each side of the engine and to do that we had to route the tubes underneath of the engine like so and take certain cylinders from one side to the other and basically that allowed us to make it so that each exhaust pulse going into our collector here would be 180 degrees apart. Now these were a lot of work to produce and today we're going to explore another possible method of making those pulses going into the collector as even as possible. So to start this video off, I'm going to hand it over to my dad, who's been building headers for longer than I have been alive. And he's going to show you his spreadsheet that he sort of uses to determine, one, how much power you can expect from an engine, and since horsepower is directly related to the airflow through the engine, that will determine the primary diameter, and then that primary diameter will be used to determine the exhaust primary length. Good morning, guys. You caught me here looking at uh, some numbers on my computer, and Calvin asked me to talk about the headers that are going on the Nova, and he had done a video on the 180 degree headers. I've been building 180 degree headers and equal length headers for years and Calvin actually questioned some things that I had thought about years ago. So we are developing a different style of headers and one of the things that we do is we recognize that an engine is a mechanical device that converts chemical energy to mechanical energy. and when you look at the engine and specifically the airflow and the horsepower output you can identify a range of operation that will make everything run better and efficient our engine is a 376 cubic inch with 376 cubic inches we can expect an rpm for a certain flow However, the camshaft is not going to let it run in that range. But we can anticipate a certain level of horsepower based on cylinder head flow. And that mechanical horsepower created by the engine is directly correlated to a flow volume. So if the cylinder heads flow around 330, the engine should make around 680 and it may be more or less based on the efficiency and other components in the engine. But uh, direct injected engines do make a little bit more horsepower. When I look at the horsepower levels and the cylinder head flow, from the cylinder head flow, and look at the primary tube diameter, what I'll find is that in the 680 horsepower, 600 uh, 90 horsepower, we would be on the high side of two inch, low side of um, uh, two and a quarter or two and an eighth inch. And typically on a smaller engine, you want to go to a smaller tube. A bigger engine, you'll want to go to a bigger tube. So when you look at this, if we size this for a small engine, 680 horsepower, two inch, we can come up with primary diameter when we tie that to primary tube length calculations that are readily available you'll see that 
uh, in an RPM range for 376 cubic inches, we're going to be, and our camshaft's going to limit us to 7,500 at the most. When you shift, the RPMs drop. Also, our converter is not going to be that loose because it's a drag and drive. So I want it to operate in a range from 5,800 to uh, 7,200 as its sweet spot, and then we'll stretch it out on the top end to 75. That gives us a tube length range of 30.8 to 24.1. Over the course of building headers for almost 40 years and reading many tech articles and listening to a lot of experts in the uh, performance industry, I have always believed that equal length headers were the best way to build a set of headers. And that has always been a focus, but there has always been the issue of on a small block Chevy, five and seven and four and eight trying to enter the collector at the same time. On an LS, its firing order is different than a small block, so your area of issue is between two and six and three and one. So one of the things that uh, we worked on years ago is we introduced what we call the spooze plate, a sequential port energy wave separator. And if you look at this set of LS headers that we ran, you can see, and hopefully you can see, there it is. I'm making a liar out of myself here. There it is. A divider wall located between one and three on the left header and two and six on the right side header. We also make every effort to bring the firing water into the collector in a rotating position. Simply stated, when you look at the firing water for an LT or an LS, you'll see that two and six try and hit the collector at the same, nearly at the same time, and three and one also do. If we try to separate that in a way different than using the spooze plate, we thought about using the RPM range of the 31 inches to 25 inches and recognizing the speed of the engine with the range difference if we divide that by three at two inch for the increments what would it look like with respect to the header tube lengths all right i'm going to pause my dad there for a second and uh, give you guys a little bit more detail on what my dad is trying to explain there Basically, you can think of a collector here as sort of a doorway. And if the Three Stooges taught me anything, if two people try to go through a doorway at the same time, things don't go very well. Come in, gentlemen. Spread out. The same is true for two exhaust pulses that are trying to go through this collector. And by spacing those pulses away from one another, it will allow for more effective exhaust scavenging and you can make more horsepower. And since we are dealing with a cross-plane V8, the exhaust pulses on uh, the even bank and the odd bank are going to have pulses which are sort of close to one another and that's something we want to avoid. So what we are basically proposing here is we're going to make certain cylinders have shorter paths and certain cylinders have longer paths so that we can hopefully time it so that the pulses going into our collector are spaced nice and evenly apart and we don't have that three stooges scenario that I described before. All right, let's hand it back to dad. Unfortunately, the packaging headache that happens with this variation in header tubes so that we have the full sweep of the RPM range is number two and number three are the shortest tubes and number one and number six are the longest tubes. We came up with the two inch incremental shift by thinking about it this way. How do we have the pulse hit at a different time and move things around to make everything work? So the lead cylinder would be the shortest and the trailing 
cylinder would be the longest with the two that are in the middle equally spreading that variation that's where we came up with these relative numbers for building the headers to and we want to put them into the collector in a rotating position and this is the pattern that we chose taking advantage of this car being a completely new build and it's going to be naturally aspirated what we wanted to do is try out this new configuration so we placed the shortest tube in first determine the position of the collector then built the longest tube and then filled it in in the firing order and that's how we created this arrangement and we took a lot of time to try and build these headers accurately we will do a bunch of dyno testing and uh, hope to have an opportunity to compare them to a different set of headers at some point but what this allows us to do is to have the tube at an ideal length through the range and as it sweeps through the rpm range it's going to shift through various cylinders and at the same time we're trying to separate number six and number two down in the collector from each other we've started the same process on the other side obviously steering becomes the big challenge but what we did again is we ran the shortest tube which in this case is number three to the collector place the collector and now we have the number one primary routed and today's effort is going to be building out number five and number seven we will again focus on bringing it into the collector in a rotation that matches the firing order some of the features of the header builds that we do will always be around installation being able to put them on and off the car with the least amount of effort and getting to the spark plugs without having issues and running tail end of the primary tubes into the collector with a long straight all right as you can see we wrapped up work on the headers that my dad was talking about in the video we were able to hit our primary tube target length on every tube within a quarter of an inch so this should be a great test of whether this hypothesis is even going to work so what do you think guys you think it'll have a neat sound you think it'll make more horsepower leave your comments down below and with that like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. The only thing more common than a video on primary tube length is opinions on primary tube length.